Hello, and welcome to the GRACE podcast series. My name is Denise Brock, and I am the Operations Director for the Global Resource for Advancing Cancer Education, or GRACE. In this podcast series, we interview patients, advocates, and healthcare professionals to provide the most updated information for our community and to highlight important issues facing those dealing with a cancer diagnosis. We hope you find this information valuable. For questions or comments, please visit us at cancergrace.org. Now, as I said before, I will discuss efficacy. As you can see from this efficacy table, the complete response rate between the two drugs are fairly similar. Overall response rate is not very important with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma because, again, this is a, well, not again, but this is an aggressive cancer. So if we aren't curing this cancer, we're not winning. So a complete response is really the only metric that really matters in diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. So the 39%, the 35%, and the 30.8% with aldronexumab are the important numbers that we really should emphasize when we treat patients with this. So about 40% of the patients will get a complete response, which means that those patients have a chance of hopefully being cured from their cancer. I'll bet the follow-up is still very short with bispecific antibodies. And as of yet, we don't know that they're cured to, at to date. Um, the duration of response with DOR is 15.6 months for epicaritimab, 18.4 months for glofitimab. And again, both agents are approved. And because CAR-T plays such a big part in our treatment paradigm nowadays, you see epicaritimab and glofitimab both have some efficacy data in post-CAR-T patients, again, with complete response rate around 34%, 35%. Um, for those who are refractory to CAR-T, you see the complete response rate does go down to 28% uh, with epicaritimab and is, has not been reported yet with glofitimab. So I think as these agents are approved now, we, we will start to get more sort of real life information about how effective they are in post-CAR T patients. Uh, because of the experience of academic centers with using CAR T and the inexperience of community sites with using CAR T, the uptake of bispecifics will most likely be mostly in academic sites as the community physicians get more comfortable dealing with CRS. Um, ICANS, as I mentioned before, is another event, but I can comfortably say that the incidence of ICANS or the neurological toxicities with these treatments are very low and really should not be the major concern versus CRS. Hopefully, as community physicians get more and more comfortable uh, with managing CRS, these drugs will be utilized much more and will give patients an opportunity, especially those who cannot get to a CAR T center or don't have the social support for a CAR T center, uh, to get a treatment that functions very similar to CAR T and does appear to be effective thus far. Thank you again for joining us. This podcast was made possible by the generosity of sponsorship from our friends at Lilly and Exalexis. Please like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Send us feedback, share your story, donate and visit us for more information at cancergrace.org. Thank you for listening.